What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Vitamin Lead, your healthy dose of leadership. I'm your host, TJ Reed, and I am so excited to have Matt Kuchera. Is that how I say it? That's right. Yeah. You nailed it. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, Matt, why don't you uh, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I am a 12 and a half year Air Force veteran. Uh, I, I got out of the Air Force back in July of 2019 went to work for a large financial institution and uh, consequently uh, love what I do. Very happy about the decision. And on top of that, uh, very passionate about helping, you know, the men and women that served or are still serving find their next transition success or their next career pivot. So that's awesome. And that's where you started the, your, your podcast vet pivot, right? That's where I started vet pivot. That's right. Absolutely. (laughs) Awesome. I look forward to talking to you about that here in just a little bit. Um, so I, I read in a little bit in your biography and just, uh, you know, internet stalked a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you were a, a drill instructor. And so uh, being somebody that hasn't been in the military, uh, I'm, number, I'm wondering, number one, what does a drill instructor do? And then uh, how did it make you a better leader being a drill instructor? Sure. Yeah. That's, uh, so really, when I think about my transition as a leader, uh, or my growth as a leader, that assignment as a drill instructor, which I did for five years uh, in the Air Force, we call them military training instructors. And that assignment is really like having your leadership skills put into uh, a Petri dish and then injected with steroids over and over and over again. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. So um, basically the job of a military training instructor or a drill instructor or a drill sergeant, depending on where you you know, what branches uh, of the military you serve in, that job is to take a civilian and turn them into a soldier, sailor, marine. You know, that's, that's your job. That's what you do. So uh, for me, for five years, my job was to mold the men and women of the United States into airmen for the United States Air Force. And as you can imagine, there are some big differences in the way that an 18 or 19-year-old, you know, uh, boy or girl comes out of education or comes out of their, you know, their neighborhoods, their communities, they show up on our doorstep in San Antonio, lost in the sauce, and they got to, they got to figure it out, you know, and, and, and luckily there's someone with a big scary hat to help them do that. So that's, (laughs) that's the drill instructor, right? That's the military training instructor. We're there to guide them, lead them, uh, and, and get them through training so that they can embrace, indoctrinate, into military service, accept and adopt the culture, and to set them up for success for the rest of their career. And one of the things that they say about your drill instructor in the military is, you'll have many supervisors throughout your career. You'll work for many people, many commanders, and you'll probably forget most of their names, Hmm. but you'll never forget the name of your drill instructor, ever. Hmm. So shout out to, uh, Technical Sergeant Michael Morin, who made life a living hell for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is 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 the approach of a? Um, I, I keep wanting to say drill instructor. You you did say that what works. the other name was, but um, so it is it more of like a shotgun approach when people come, or are you trained to be very personalized with the different people based on their circumstances? So I can't speak for the other branches of service. I know in the Air Force, they spend a lot of time on, on learning temperaments and different behavior patterns, behavior types. So that's part of our training and our schooling. Uh, we get a lot of training on uh, emotional intelligence as well as the, uh, the Myers-Briggs personality type tests. Uh, we learn that about ourselves and how to apply it to ourselves first. And then we learn how to apply that in a training environment. So there's, there's a significant uh, steep incline or steep learning curve to how to be a leader. And there's also a a pretty strict selection process as well. So not anybody can go down and be a military training instructor in the air force. You have to be selected for that assignment from your chain of command, your, your leadership team at your current assignment. And then you have to submit a package and application and they have to approve of it down at the, uh, at at the 737 training group in Mm -hmm. San Antonio. So it's, it's a pretty selective process. There's, it's a very small core. Somewhere between five and 600 people can do the job. And we train anywhere from 35,000 to 40,000 men and women a year. 
wow. in uh, in the service. So you, if you think about that, it's uh, it's a it's a pretty significant ratio of instructor to student. Yeah, absolutely. Right. What do, what do you think was the most important leadership lesson you learned when you were uh, leading these men and women that are just getting into the Air Force? Oh, there's, it's hard to pick just one. I mean, really, when I say I grew, I grew. So, um, you know, I think there's, there's two answers to that. When it comes to leading myself, it was time management mm. and the ability to fit things into blocks of time in my day expanded my horizons on what I thought a day was. Hmm. And I, and I figured out that, okay, until now I've been wasting a lot of time on a daily basis and it kind of makes you rethink the 40 hour work week, if you will, sure. uh, which is, is kind of minimal when you think the number of hours in a week, but honestly, it's, it's one of those things where if I could break a task down or multiple tasks or all the tasks I have to do in a day and I can break it into 15 or 30 minute blocks in my schedule, there's no limit to how much I can get done. Yeah. And when I started my days off that way as a, as a military training instructor, it really opened my eyes to, oh, this doesn't have to be just training. I can do this for anything, which, you know, later on served me very well when I left that assignment. Um, so that's leading myself. When it comes to leading other people, yeah. uh, there's not a one one size fits all approach. Yeah. And so that's probably the best lesson I learned is mm -hmm. that you really a lot of a lot of frustration comes from trying to lead people the way that you would want to be led. And really what you have yeah. to do is you gotta figure out, okay, well, how do I lead someone the way that they need to be led? And it goes back to the way that people learn. Right. If you're leading someone, you're trying to inspire them. You're trying to light a fire underneath them and get them to do what you need them to do. Right. So how do you inspire that out of commitment rather than compliance, which I'll be honest with you, I can get them to do what I want them to do all day right. out of compliance. Right. right? I have, One I of have a few stripes. leadership jobs. You can actually do that. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I got the stripes. I got all the authority. I'm in the power position and I could if I wanted to, but the product wouldn't be wouldn't be there. And I wouldn't be creating a good airman, one yeah. that's, that's committed to the core or to the, to the Air Force as a whole and believes in the mission. So you, you play this delicate balance of, yeah, I, you're going to do what I tell you to do, but I'm going to make you want to do what I tell you to do. Yeah. You know, it's, and that's, that was the, the balance is figuring that out for each person. Mm, that's so good. I think one of the best advice I got when I first started the job that I'm currently in is somebody said, TJ, you got to remember you're one of 16 different personality types on that Myers-Briggs. And so yeah, one sixteenth of the insight. So make sure you're reaching out for the other 15 out of 16. That's right. I, everyone, everyone receives information different. You know, yeah. it's, it's very, it's very funny in that sense because I, it's, there's a video on YouTube and it's, uh, it's pretty famous. It, it's, it's gone around the, the World Wide Web a few times, but it's, a, it's a, a, a man and a woman, and they're talking about the nail on the head. Have you seen this one? I don't, I don't know that I have. Yeah, so, they're, <laughs> so it's talking about the breakdown in communication between two people and how, how men and women can see things so differently yet still be talking about the same thing, right? It's, I'm familiar with this. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> You know, and it's no different in any other working relationship that you have, although if you're married or in a committed relationship, the stakes are a little higher personally, but yeah. it's, it's the same concept. You can be talking to someone about the same subject, about the same task, and they see it completely differently, but yeah. agree that the task needs to be done. So it's, it's very uh, fickle leadership is, and, and you have to learn how to figure that out. Yeah. Well, that's, that's helpful. Thank you for sharing that stuff. I, yeah, I appreciate yeah. uh, getting the schooling on uh, a drill instructor. <laughs> Some of the lessons you learned. Thank you. That's, hey, that's what we do. You know, it's, uh, I think in five years, 82,000 people uh, were, were led by or taught by, by myself. So, wow. um, you what, know, what a privilege and a responsibility, huh? Huge. Yeah. When you talk about the Air Force having less than 300,000 people in it at any given time, uh, there's a 25%. Five 
where I <laughs> trained a large chunk of of the the men and women in the service. So it's it's pretty cool. It's cool when they reach back out to you. They remember you. That's how you know you did a good job. And yeah, and uh, you know they want to tell you about birthdays. They want to tell you about promotions, weddings. You know all that fun stuff. And and so that's really cool. Man, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I want to pivot a little bit here. I think there that's going to be a theme the rest of the interview. But uh, I I read that you did some studying with MIT. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I love this because you were using uh, blockchain technology to expedite background check process. And so I want to hear a little bit about that, but then also maybe share some of your thoughts on you know how leaders can embrace new technology because I think it's such an important thing in our uh growing culture of technology. Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, one of the key things that I like to point out, it's, it's, and this is more, this is going back to, so you remember, I was talking about how I learned how to lead myself and my time. Uh, I did the coursework with MIT. Uh, it was an executive uh, education course on blockchain technology, leadership tactics and strategies, how to execute blockchain missions essentially mm. in, in, across various different use cases of which we had to think up uh, was part of the course. So um, I did that while I was enrolled full-time in my graduate program at Purdue University. So I was going to school, two different schools at the same time. Uh, you must be a glutton for punishment. I am a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. But I, you know, I just found myself like, oh, I can accomplish more. And now, you know, I would look at my calendar and be like, yeah, I could fit in like, I, when I would enroll in a course or a school, I'd be like, well, what are, what's the time commitment on this? <laughs> so, was, so I could figure out, cause I was instantly going to go to my, my calendar and say, do I have enough blocks to get mm-hmm. this done? So um, yeah, I, I was really fascinated by the blockchain thing and I'm a bit of a, an investment nerd and I love watching the markets and paying attention to trends. And uh, so it's just a hobby of mine that I got into a long time ago when, when my late grandfather uh, told me, hey, you'd be dumb not to. So, uh, so I did. I started following it with him. And blockchain was this thing came out with Bitcoin. So, it's an older technology. It's not. It's just kind of been revamped or repurposed. And it's really cool to get the perspective of these, uh, you know, these cutting edge leaders in the blockchain field, and what they brought to our course at MIT. And I thought that, you know there are so many use cases that haven't been figured out yet. And the, my classmates and I, we all had a different use case that we had to come up with for our platform. And so I was thinking at the time, I'm in the military, what is something that's a pain point for the military where blockchain would have a good use case? And at the time I was going through a, uh, <laughs> I was getting my security clearance redone and I was like, this is such, this is a pain point in my life. And, uh, and so I did some research only to find out that the, the backlog and the amount of taxpayer dollars that go into this security clearance check for the, for the military and for other federal positions is humongous. And it's years yeah. long for some of these, for some of these background checks. Yeah. People wait years for them. And they're waiting on jobs that, that they can't get until they get... So it's a mess. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, what's the big holdup there? Well, one of the holdups is they don't have enough people to do the actual checks. Right. Right. So now I'm thinking, okay, well, blockchain kind of solves that issue a little bit, right? Because now you're, you can almost automate the check process and you can use, and, and the way I thought about it was you can create an environment or, or an ecosystem type blockchain where other companies and and entities can build their platforms off of. So what do we need? We need social security administration. We need a platform on that. You would need the, uh, you know, all 50 States driver's licenses and all that stuff. need a platform on that, you know, and start thinking about all the different aspects of a background check. Yeah. They would all build a platform on top of this ecosystem blockchain. Hmm. So now all those parts are touching and that verification process can just happen, you know? Uh, and, and the other flip side of that to the customer, in this case, there's two different customers, be the government, and then you also have the customer of 
the person who actually needs the clearance, right? So it was person, waiting a while for that job. I know some friends that have been waiting. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> the person that needs the clearance can now get a token. They can get a coin, if you will, this token or coin, uh, this credential would be their, their clearance and they can carry that with them throughout their career. Wow. One of the things that really sucks about the clearance process is every seven to 10 years, you're redoing this 50 or 60 page document. You have to go back and remember, remember the names of people in the places you lived 10 years ago. Wow. Because you have to reference them and then they have to background check that. So all of that stuff can be costlessly verified through a blockchain technology. Hmm. Now there are problems that still need to be solved, compute problems and stuff like that. But that was what my use case was based off of. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That's yeah, such a, a cool use of that. I know I've had friends that have tried to work for the government. We're in a big area here in Norfolk, Virginia beach. And Man, the amount of time they wait for that sort of stuff is uh, can yes. be months and sometimes right. years, really. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really if you've never had one before and it's your initial, it's really a pain process. Yeah, it's it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Now, so so you you made the transition. Uh, you're now working in the financial industry, and uh, you also started a really cool thing called the Vet Pivot Podcast. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Tell tell us about that. So. Uh, one of my buddies, uh, also a drill instructor, right? A military training instructor that I worked with um, named Adam Bratz. You can look him up as well. Uh, he's, he's an awesome guy. He helped me out in my transition. So when I left the service back in, in July, I had reached out to Adam a few months prior. And Adam helped me with some LinkedIn stuff. And he had transitioned out of the Air Force a couple years before me. And so it was already established. He put me in contact with people that were in his network. Hmm. Um, one of those people ended up being Kevin O'Brien, who's a local guy here, but he runs a company called Veteran Recruiting, which is a nationwide company, really awesome, awesome company. And uh, he put me in touch with uh, a guy named Bob Waldo, who kind of became my champion. You know, he was, he was out there pounding the pavement for me and, and got me some interviews. And lo and behold, I got a job all before my contract in the Air Force was, was expired. So mm-hmm. I never had a lapse in employment. I said to Adam, I was like, I am so grateful yeah. for that. And I, I, want, I want to document this and I want to interview people and I want to inspire the men and women that are, that, are, that are out there having a hard time or about to go through this transition. I want them to hear my advice. This is my journey. What did I do? I was passionate about blockchain or I was, I was an IT PMO lead for the Air Force. So I went and, and got a master's degree in IT project management from Purdue. And I took all these steps to set myself up to walk into a role that I already, that I have now. Hmm. Uh, how can I help veterans repeat that process? Yeah. So it was a way of paying it forward, if you will. And it's been Remarkable. I, we started in September. Um, we started September 16th. Actually, started the same week that Adam received award as the top uh, military influencer on social media. Oh, wow. Uh, at, a, at a conference called the Military Influencers Conference. So um, it was a good week to launch. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of buzz around, uh, around Adam, and, and that really helped out. And then, uh, and then my position in, in my firm uh, is, is one that not a lot of veterans achieve right out of service. So it's, it's, it's been really good for us. We have a lot of, we had a lot of instant credibility and, and we've backed that up with just top notch guests. And, and you've seen, uh, we've seen an increase month over month in our listenership because what we do is we take what is probably the most stressful time in a, in a veteran's career that initial fear of, okay, I'm leaving the military and sort of this security net and, and ecosystem they provide for us and uh, I'm going out on my own. Yeah. After however many years that I've been relying on the, the men and women to my left and right to take care of me and watch my back, now I'm going out on my own. And it's lonely and it's scary and you feel uh, misunderstood or misrepresented and it's, it's just a tough time. And, and veterans have a real tough time with that. Um, you know, I had a, a number of my friends who, uh, who took their lives 
after they got out of the out of the service, right? And it's something that we have a real issue with in our community. Twenty two every single day will yeah. uh, will end their ride, and and so it was. It's a stressful, scary time, full of uncertainty and self doubt. And when you couple that with the mental health issues of of people that have been through what military folks have seen and gone through over the last two decades and beyond, it's it's been it's been a hell of a ride trying to get to a place where we can help people overcome that, but also lighten the mood a little bit around it. And so that's what we try to create is something that is jovial and and kind of a, you know, brother picking on a brother type thing but also provides really quality, high quality information. And that's why that pivot I think has been successful. That's awesome. Yeah. What what a necessary thing to do. And so thank you for how you're serving those folks. So there's not hopelessness, but maybe a little bit of laughter in that transition. That's right. Yeah. It's, it's a ton of fun on top of that. You know, we've, we've implemented some segments. We have rapid fire segment where we just kind of, we take the, uh, the social engagement and we, we pose a question and then, you know, two, three weeks later, we take all the responses and kind of read them back and forth on air, the best ones. And then uh, we do a salutes and demerits, which is funny because, you know, we kind of give praise to someone in the community that's doing great stuff. And then then we give a demerit and kind of uh, joke on someone or trash on someone that's, that's not doing great stuff. Um, We also have, uh, you know, every episode has a, a veteran musician. So we have a veteran artist, veteran musician that is uh, is playing the interlude music. So in between segments, we will play clips of their music as yeah. a way to give back and, and kind of sponsor and support the veteran artists community, which is, is you know, really underrepresented in, in their industry. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I listen to it. everything you say that it is. It, it absolutely is, and so that's. I, I encourage our listeners to to go take a listen to it. How so? How can people find Vet Pivot? How can they connect with you? Uh, yeah, if absolutely. Enjoy what they're hearing here. Sure. So uh, you can go to vetpivot.com, and we can be found there. The podcast can be listened to on uh, anywhere where that you listen to podcasts. Just about uh, we're on we're on everything. iHeartRadio. Uh, Google, we're on, you know, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, you name it, we're on it. Um, and then we also have uh, our social media. So we have at Vet Pivot for everything. Sure. Uh, for Facebook, it's, uh, it's Vet Pivot is the main page for the business. And we have a private group uh, for veterans that's uh, Vet Pivot Nation. So yeah, we're, we're having fun with it. It's a, it's a good time. We also have a blog uh, it's on the website where Adam and I, uh, we, we each have our own little uh, stream of articles that we release weekly. So it's a good time. Well, thank you so much for the work that you're doing, Matt, um, you and your partner and I appreciate uh, and that. all that you're doing. And thank you for your service and thank you for yeah. uh, training and leading men and women to be the best they can be in the military. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, TJ. Thank you. And to well, your listeners too, thanks for for putting up with uh, with this guy. So thanks. That's, no, it, it, it was wonderful. Thanks for the the stuff that you shared. And so uh, we will talk soon. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, live healthy leaders, and we will talk again real soon. Bye bye. Thanks. <laughs>